Hey, everybody. Welcome back to The Dive. Today on the show, we have David Morgan from The Morgan Report back on. He's going to answer some of our questions about the Fed's next move, Russia doubling its holding limit of gold and the Chinese yuan, Japan's unscheduled bond buying, the Twitter conspiracies turning out to be more than conspiracies, Sam Bankman fried pleading not guilty, along with his thoughts on lithium, gold, silver, and the important trends that he's seeing for 2023. Hey, David, welcome back to The Dive. Well, thank you, Cassandra. It's good to be back. Now, according to the central bank's December minutes, officials will maintain a restrictive policy stance until the incoming data gives confidence that inflation pressures are easing. At what pace do you think that the Fed will raise rates in the future after slowing down to 50 basis points in December? I think they're going to continue uh, at that level. So 50 basis points instead of 75 on the next one, maybe at one after, maybe another one. I think at some point they'll do a pause, which means they're not going to raise or lower. And that will be the signal to the markets that they're more or less throwing in the towel and giving up on fighting inflation with raising interest rates. Now, at the same time that they pause, they will have all kinds of, let's say, rhetoric out there saying that inflation's come down from 7% and now it's only 4 and we're being realistic and we probably can't get it back down to 2 and blah, 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 blah. And some of that may be true. But there's so much misallocation of capital built into the system already that interest rate will not fix the problem. Now, Russia has doubled its holding limit of gold and Chinese yuan within the National Wealth Fund. What impact do you think that this will have on the dollar long term? Well, the trend is very clear. I just did an interview earlier today, and I forget the numbers, but the idea is correct. But if you go back, I think, two decades, 80% of world settlement was in USD. Now it's something like 60%. You can't quote my numbers, but that's the trend. And that trend will continue and accelerate because there's going to be a point where even though the dollar is the strongest of all fiat currencies relative to all the others, it's still not worth papers printed. And once that realization takes place, which is more or less tied to when the pivot takes place or if it takes place, then you're going to see a run out of the dollar. But that's that's ahead of us. Okay. Now, this week, the Bank of Japan announced a fourth day of unscheduled bond buying. What are your thoughts on what's happening in Japan? Well, I think it's a precursor for the world at large. I mean, the central bank of Japan has been in a stagflation for decades. And one of the best trades you could make, in theory, would have been to short the Japanese bond. And yet, I know guys have gone broke doing that. And finally... Uh, Japan was more or less forced to increase their interest rates and more or less all hell broke loose. So it's a bad situation when no one wants your product and the only one left to buy it is the buyer of last resort, which is the central bank. That's what's happening, and that tells a big story because it means we're getting very near the end of this fiat fiasco. Paper is a wonderful situation, and it's I've often actually alluded to the bond market seizing up, freezing up, having a big fall off. Cassandra, and I've done it, used Japan often as one I pick, not that I know anything in the future, but it's it could happen anywhere. But my analogy is that the Japanese Central Bank has got enough U.S. treasuries. <clears throat> they don't want it anymore. They start selling it off at, a let's say, double their normal rate. Somebody that's sitting in Dubai looks at that on their screen and says, oh my goodness, I don't know what's going on. I haven't seen anything in the news feed, but Japan's dumping U.S. Treasury like crazy. We better do the same thing. And all of a sudden you get this kind of feeding frenzy built on nothing other than the perception that somebody wants out of the U.S. dollar in a bad way, and I do too. And then those two get on the screen of somebody in uh, uh, in Europe, in a Swiss bank, and they see this. Wait a minute, Japan's dropping the dollar? And Dubai's dropping a dollar. I don't know what's happening, but we better do the same thing. So you see where I'm going with this. And of course, there's algorithms and all this stuff that's out there. I get it. But there's nothing that can be predicted 100% of the time. In other words, long-term capital management. Prove 
that their algorithms will probably be best on the planet for a few years. But when the Russian ruble fiasco happened, even that algorithm failed, which means that we're going to see another failure in the financial system. How big, when, where, and why, I can't tell. Okay, now let's shift gears to Twitter. Elon Musk recently confirmed that almost every conspiracy theory that people had about Twitter turned out to be true. Where do you think that Twitter goes from here? Good question. I One, honest answers, I'm not sure. Uh, there's a lot less uh, cancel culture and censorship than there was previously, but, I still th- but it still exists. And I'm uh, neutral on Elon. I don't know him well enough. Never met him personally, never. I did write an open letter to him some time ago about the importance of silver for his businesses. But I also believe he's a technocrat. And I put that on my Twitter feed, Cassandra. I said that his grandfather was the lead in Canada for technocracy, which was something that very few people know about. I talk about it probably not often enough. My good friend Patrick Wood is the world's leading authority as far as I'm concerned. He's, t- he's written a few books about it, and he's interviewed fairly frequently about it. But uh, technocracy differs from uh, a totalitarian system. It's run by algorithms, scientists, and engineers, and the political class kind of gets pushed off to the side eventually. So there is um, the outcome of that is not utopian. It's anything but. However, um, this is kind of the trend that we're seeing. So I'll remain um, observant. I don't want to be judgmental, but I do have my um, antenna up. (laughs) Okay. So let's move on here. Um, FTX founder Sam Bankman-Fried pleaded not guilty to fraud and other criminal charges. How do you think that this will unfold? Oh, very slowly, carefully, and somewhat contrived. I mean, I hate to say it, but it's my perception. This is my answer to your question. Doesn't mean I'm right. Is that the corruption is so pervasive throughout in the United States, all three branches of government, executive, legislative, and judicial, that um, there's corrupt, so corruption at the courts. So it's interesting he pleaded not guilty. I don't know if he's advised to do that. There are people behind this bank with read carry but whether or not they can be you know held accountable or brought into the uh justice system i don't know i do think uh, it's a shame that it happened and um i think it's another one of those situations in the financial markets i wouldn't equate it to the tulip bowl mania or the mississippi bubble or some of these other things that have taken place throughout history but it's the old adage, caveat emptor, buyer beware. And it's going to decimate the crypto market even further, in my view. And he didn't ask the question, but I'd like to add this, Cassandra, and that is that te- the story of Tether has not really been fulfilled all. And FTX had a great relationship with Tether because that can be traced. So my theory is that, it's not my theory, but my Uh, idea along with others that proposed it is that Tether's story is unfold will unfold further and it will take down the market. So uh, shifting gears here, Zimbabwe recently banned all lithium exports after the government said it was losing 1.7 billion euros from exporting. At the same time, the EU is set to announce if they will classify lithium as toxic. If this trend continues, what impact do you think it will have on the lithium market? Well, add volatility. And I tweeted out the first article you mentioned. I mean, Zimbabwe, you know, the raw material, you get paid very little for it. But in the, you know, when it's in a battery, it's gone up several fold. And that's what they pointed out in that article. I, I would commend them to go ahead and start making lithium batteries. It's not that difficult. So, um, it volatility and probably upward pressure. I'm looking at a lithium company right now. I may feature. I'm still debating in my head whether or not to go with it or not. But uh, lithium is what we're used to, certainly pervasive in the cell phone world and also in the EV world. But it's really not the absolute best material. But at present time, it's acting as if it's the best. I'm fairly bullish on it. 
That's all I really have to say. Okay, now let's shift to the precious metals. The gold price is hitting up to a six-month high as we speak. How sustainable do you think that this will be? It'll be sustainable this year. I do think we'll see a new you know, nominal high in, uh, in gold this year. I don't think we'll see a nominal high in silver. I hope I'm wrong. But, uh, you know, all we needed to get to is like 2100 in gold for it to be a nominal high. The reason I say nominal again and again is because if you inflation adjust the 850 high USD from January 21st, 1980 to the present day, it's far above the 2000 level. And it depends what numbers you use. If you use the CPI printed by the government or you use shadowstats.com, which is a more accurate number. Regardless, it will be the biggest number out there, and I definitely think we're going to see that as a minimum. There'll be some backing and filling here, and of course, there's any negative news that the mainstream financial press to make the dollar look good, they'll jump all over it. But the trend is central banks have uh, loaded up on gold to the highest level in 55 years. Russia has already put out this ruble 3.0, which I just posted on my Twitter. I would suggest everybody that really wants to know what's going on financially read that article. Also read between the lines. And if Russia is bold enough to say, hey, we don't want to buy our oil paid for in these currencies. We'd like to have it grams of gold. Watch out. That shifts everything. Okay, so last question we have for you. What important trends do you see unfolding this year? Well, one, I just wrote, you know, the Morgan Report premium, you know, paid service. And I put out a few ideas one is that uh, commodities will be the sector to be in. Don't look for stocks, bonds, and real estate to be the best investments going forward. Precious metals will probably lead in the commodity sector. Look for a disruption in, um, in humanity. I don't know if it's going to be illness-related, climate change-related, geopolitical, war-related. Get used to the idea that the word recession will be popping up more and more in the mainstream press, and occasionally you'll even hear the word depression. Food prices are ready to, I wouldn't say double everywhere, but believe it or not, and you can mark my words, food prices for some foodstuffs will double. For you. So the overall contraction with the physical economy continues. I'm not trying to be a doomer. I'm just trying to be a realist. Out of a lot of pressure comes great things. Remember, coal turns into a diamond under extreme pressure. So as the pressure continues to bear down on us, humanity at large, I look for the, the other side of the coin, meaning you're going to see some breakthroughs, some brilliant ideas, maybe more ability to speak your mind and not be as uh, you know censored as we have been in the past. And I think there'll be more of an awakening, which means that more people will be real about what's really taking place and that the political class really doesn't offer many solutions that we've actually going to look to ourselves. And David, for our audience that would like to hear more from you, where, where can they go to do so? Well, thank you. I just started an Instagram channel. I mean, I'm pretty old for that, but I have help. It's at Real Silver Guru for Instagram. I'm trying to do, you know, that uh, style, you know, short, pithy, in your face, two minute blur blurbs kind of thing. Just started that. Twitter feed is the best free info I have. Uh, get on the free report, which is at themorganreport.com, because I don't know if or when I'll be deplatformed from the mainstream social media. I have backup on almost all the alt channels like uh, Odyssey, Rumble. I'm not sure my webmaster handles that for us. But uh, free list, Twitter. Instagram, I'm on LinkedIn, don't do much there. Uh, Facebook, I really don't do much. And uh, the blog, if you go to the Morgan Report and hit the blog, usually you'll get uh, most of the interviews I do in the public. Okay. Well, uh, thank you so much for taking the time to come, on, to come on and share your thoughts with us today, David. It's been a pleasure as usual. Thank you, Cassandra. Appreciate it. If you guys enjoy content like this, consider giving us a follow by hitting that red subscribe button below so you don't have to do all of the research yourself. Thanks and goodbye.